I'll be showing eight new features in Teams for Education. This includes updates for assignments, Reflect, Mobile, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a top educator request, which is to hold feedback to students until you return the assignment. So I'm here as a teacher signed in, and I'm gonna to go to Assignments. I've made an Amazon Rainforest assignment here for my class. I'm gonna open it up. And right here, Ashley has turned it in, you can see here. So I'm gonna open up Ashley in the speed grader. Now here is Ashley's paper. In the past, whether it was a Word document or a PowerPoint or whatever it might be, when you gave feedback, for example, if I highlighted some things here, went to the review tab and put a new comment, when I would add these comments, if Ashley happened to open up the Word document, she would see the comments even if I wasn't done. And so maybe I did part of the comments here, I did part of them later, and I didn't want Ashley to see everything. I didn't really have an option. Now the way it works by default is all of the comments that you add, maybe add another one here, all of these comments will not go back until I hit the return button over here. So it's essentially in a temporary held state. Now when I hit return, now Ashley can open up the document and see all of the comments. So again, the comments are hidden by default until you hit return. The second new feature is updates to how you can export grades and you have more options now. So I'm gonna to go to grades here as a teacher. In the upper right, there's this export to Excel button. Historically, you could only export to CSV and the file was very simple. It worked for some educators, but we also wanted to give them an option to see a much richer Excel export. So I'm gonna choose export to Excel here. Okay, it saved it to the downloads folder. Now I'm gonna go open that up. Here is the exported Excel file and we've got nice data slicers over on the left-hand side. So if I just wanna filter on a specific student with that data slicer, I can do that. I have links to the assignments there. I can clear the filter here and select different options. So really nice way to filter and play with all of your grade data by assignment. The third new feature is support for Reflect in staff teams. So I'm gonna to go to the three dot menu and I'm gonna search for Reflect. Here it is, I'll choose this. And now choose add to a team. So I'm gonna add this to my staff team because this is gonna be customized for staff and adults, not just for students. Okay, we'll add to the general channel and I will choose set up. So this is pre-populated already, but the key is for staff, if I go to create check-in, I get customized questions designed for school staff. This can be personal, there's a set of questions here. Classroom relationships, for example, over the last week, how have you felt about your relationships with your students? It could be educator support for school ecosystem or opportunities to grow your teaching practice. Or you can do a customization in any way that you want. So how do you think your students are feeling about enter your topic? So if I go to educator support, maybe I go to about how do I feel about my school's ecosystem and for the demo respondent view, so this is gonna be the staff members that you send out this reflect to, they will see something like this. So I could say, how do you feel this week? And I could say this, and I can choose my little feelings monster and hit submit. So this is gonna be what the staff members see. So it's very similar to the student reflect, but instead of having student-based questions, you will now see staff-based questions. So I'll hit next and I can schedule my check-in just like I normally would, and now I'll choose post check-in. And there we go, eight hours left in this. How do you feel about lesson planning for this week? The fourth new feature is a OneNote class notebook viewer in a class team on mobile. This makes it really easy to access your class notebook and see it even if you don't have the actual app downloaded. Many students have told us they don't have a ton of room on their phone and to download an 80 megabyte file can be clunky. So if I just wanna view things, this makes it really easy. I'm here in Teams, I'll tap on the general channel and I'll go to apps in the upper right. And now I'll choose class notebook. This is the web viewer. So I'm gonna expand content library, click on unit two notes. And now I'll go to jazz lesson. And this is just a web view of that page. So really quick and easy. If I wanna edit it, I go in the upper right and tap the OneNote icon, and now it actually opens up the app if I happen to install it on my iPhone. So this is the rich OneNote app. I happen to have installed it, but if I just wanted to view things, don't even need that. The fifth new feature is the ability to translate a chat message. So right here, I have a chat that came to me in French, and I don't know French, so I'm gonna go and tap translate, it auto detects it, and it's gonna say auto translate and it goes to my language on my phone right there in English. Super handy and supported in a ton of languages. 
The sixth new feature is the direct integration of chat for parents and teachers with Teams Mobile. Now I'm here in my iPhone and I'm gonna go tap on apps just to show there is a parents area now. If I go here, I can see all the existing chats that I've been having and it filters them. But I'm gonna go back into the main area and tap on chat at the bottom and I have some parents I've been chatting with. I have parents, I can talk about how their student's doing and it's directly integrated right into Teams Mobile. So if your IT administrator has set this up already as an educator, you can now have that parent connection and chat directly in Teams Mobile. The seventh new feature is a new class homepage, which is default in all existing and new class teams. I'm here as an educator in my class team, and I'm gonna to go to this new option that's just showing up, which is the homepage option. And this is for every educator. Now I'm gonna click on here to set this up for the first time. Little dialogue. Here is the class homepage. Now this is actually backed by SharePoint behind the scenes, so it's rendering a SharePoint homepage. Every team automatically gets a SharePoint site, and it's always been like that. What we're doing now is exposing a customized education-flavored SharePoint homepage for every class. And here's the parts you get. You get a nice welcome part here, and I'll show how to edit all these things in just a bit. You get an announcement area. You can pin interesting resources or links that are always important for the class. It pulls in the calendar, so the class schedule is pulled in right here automatically. So for example, if I have office hours or lab hours or other things like that, that automatically pulls in. I can even hit the join directly here from that calendar part. Upcoming assignments are listed right here. Here are two different assignments that are coming up for the class. The assignments web part is live. So as a teacher, if I click Amazon Rainforest here, it takes me right into my teacher review experience. If I was a student, it would open up the assignment for me as that student directly in Teams. Now I'll go back. There's a little card for educators to be able to put their picture and their name or whatever else they wanna say. And then recent files that have been used in the class. So pulling from class materials or other places, those show up automatically. So a really handy and compact, simple homepage by default the other nice thing is, is that as the educator, you can go and see analytics on that page. So if I click this, it pulls up page analytics. Now I'm just doing a demo, so these analytics aren't terribly interesting. I'll have a couple of page views. But if you have people coming to this homepage, you can actually get a sense of when people are looking at it and a lot of really interesting things. We'll close this. One of the best parts about SharePoint homepages is that you can edit them. So I'm gonna go in the upper right here and click edit. Now I'm in edit mode, and this homepage is actually just made up of SharePoint web parts. It's very easy to customize and edit them. It's also easy to move them around or even add new ones or remove things. So in this case, I'm gonna do a couple of simple updates. Click here, and we're gonna say welcome to, and I'm gonna change this to Mr. Tholfson's class. If I wanna change the image, I just click on the image and you get this image tool, so I can resize it, so I can make it smaller like this or make it back to normal. I can crop the image, I click here and I can crop things. So you've got a lot of different options on customizing this in just the way you want. Lastly, if you wanna change the default image right here, all you need to do is go and click this edit pencil to edit the web part. On the right hand side, that opens up the image pane. Now what I'm gonna do is click change. Here are the recent images, that's the class home I currently have. Stock images, which is really nice, lots of great options that are really colorful. You can do a web search, upload from OneDrive, however you wanna do it. I'll go here and choose stock images just to show what it looks like. I'll scroll down, I like this one right here, and I will choose at the bottom, insert. Ooh, that looks really nice. Now if that's a little bit too big, you can make it smaller and, and crop, do those other things. I'll just flip back to the one that I had previously. Now the other thing I can do is change some of these headings here. So educators can add a heading or announcement. So I'll delete this and add my own heading. Science is amazing. You can add some descriptions and announcements right here. I'll say the new lab coats are ready to pick up and you can do all sorts of highlighting and changing and formatting. We'll scroll down. You have the resources area. Maybe you wanna add some quick links I can add things here. I'm not gonna add links and, and change the sizings. You also have assignments and you can customize this. Maybe I wanna move assignments above resources. So you can see as I hover, I get that little four-way arrow. I'm gonna click and drag this part and we're gonna drop it to be above resources. So I just swapped places because assignments is more important than resources. 
And here's the class schedule web part. Now let's say when I go down, I actually want to insert another web part. So when I hover, I get this little plus and I'm going to add a new part to my homepage. And if I scroll down here and give myself a little more space, there's all sorts of web parts. So here's some of the common ones, news, people, quick links. You can also add all sorts of text and media. Maybe I want to add a YouTube video. Let's click this one. On the right hand side up here, it asks for my YouTube link. So I'm going to get a fun science YouTube link. Paste that there. A nice Bill Nye the Science Guy video. Oh, there he is talking about the new web telescope. So I've added my YouTube video right here in line. And I encourage you explore. There are so many different web part types you can add. You can make a really fun and engaging homepage. It's up to you. And we'll scroll down a little further. Now in this case, it's got an about me. This could be the area for the teacher to add things. And this is one that maybe when you're brand new in class, you have this, you can put a fun image in there. You can add a profile link, whatever you want to say. But in this case, you know what, maybe I don't want to have the about me. So I'm just going to hit delete and I will delete that web part. And you can see the web page automatically reflows after I deleted it. So we'll scroll back up. This looks pretty good. I'm going to go to the upper right and click republish. Now right here, it says republish briefly. My new web page is ready to go. Welcome to Mr. Thulfson's class. Science is amazing. New lab coats are ready to pick up. There is my Bill Nye YouTube video that's embedded. And here are the resources down at the bottom and then recent files. It's pretty nice. Now I'm ready to go. Anyone who comes into my class gets a nice homepage. The eighth new feature is the ability to assign seats in together mode. I'm here in Teams and we're going to do together view assigned seating. So I can put folks exactly where I want them as the organizer in together mode. So if Adam needs to be in the front row where I can keep an eye on him, that's what we're going to do. So in the upper left, I'm going to drop this down and we'll choose together mode. Here we are in the basic together view mode. Now I'm going to change this. So if I go down to the lower left and choose change scene, now I've got my options. And I'm going to scroll down and find one that I like here. Oh, Minecraft view. I kind of like this one. Now there's a new option, assign seats. So if I click this button, now here we are in the new assigned seats dialog. You can see all the little chairs are ready and I can just drag people where I want them to go. So we're going to drag Adam right in the front row there. And I'm going to sit next to Adam so I can keep my eye on him. So I'm going to drag myself right there. And Cosma, she's always causing trouble. We're going to put her in the back. Uh, and but we'll have Emma. She's going to keep an eye on Anne right there. And then we will have Anthony in this row and we'll put Jess in the second row. So everyone's in their seat now. And now I'll click assign. Hey, here we are. We're all in our assigned seats. I see Adam right here on my left. Looks like Jess is waving down to me. Everyone is just where they need to be. So now you can assign seats in together mode. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.